الله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى ولا سيما سيدنا محمد المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله أهل الصفاء ورضي الله عن أصحابه أهل الوفاء وعمن بآثاره مقتدى واهتدى واقتفى أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I'm not very good about ceremonial stuff so I won't spend a lot of time but obviously you know uh, like Dr. Chohan mentioned uh, uh, lots of people I know them very closely in this community may Allah reward them all I know lots of good people and all the people are good and uh, I feel home whenever I am with people like Dr. Chohan and and all the good people that I don't want to mention the names because otherwise that's what we're going to be spend, spending the whole half an hour talking about. So Allah reward you all for all your efforts and uh, uh, and zeal and desire to keep alive the remembrance of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wasallam Seerah and Wilada I just want to say Wilada and Mawlad because sometimes people associate a taboo with this though this came in the authentic narration in Sahih Lima Muslim so that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to fast the day of Monday and when he was asked Hadith, hadith Abu Qatad Al-Ansari the Hadith that was narrated by Abu Qatad Radiallahu Anhu and he said, they said Ya Rasulullah why were you fasting Monday? He said it's a day I was born in it's my birthday so I fast out of thanking Allah for that day and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he marks that day and does not let go that day unmarked and that's the Sunnah obviously so there's no shame in that and I know these I'm not saying anything look I know Within our, our ummah, we're people, we're human beings. There's always things that take it one extreme and things that take it the other extreme. But I mean, one ought not to be intimidated by anything as long as the texts, texts mean the, the Quran and the authentic sunnah, substantiate and sanction something. For this is where the deen is. The deen is not what I say versus what you say, but it's what Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said and what Al Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi Wasallam authentically said. And that's the that's closes the case. And if he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam expresses his happiness on the day of his birth, not once a year, but once a week, by allocating a specific worship, which is fasting, then we ought to at least do the same and express our happiness for his birth, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, every week. Preferably by fasting allocating that specific worship for that and absolutely not shy away from that I mean you know sometimes we tend to over intellectualize what we think is so complex yet it's so simple for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's words are very simple yet profound and need no over intellectualization because they're already intellectual to the highest of levels so uh, I stand here in front of you and I, you know, the, I only can give you my love and appreciation and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and to uh, enable us all to learn. Inna asdaq al hadithi kitab Allah ta'ala. The best of hadith, the hadith Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated by Nasa'i Muslim and others. And the hadith is sahih where he says sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam inna asdaq al hadithi kitab Allah ta'ala. وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. So since he صلى الله عليه وسلم says أن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله there is nothing better to start than كتاب الله. We talked yesterday. What do you want me to do? It's okay. <laughs> Louder? Look, I don't want to scream, you know. 
we are here to just be, I, I, you know, you, you all, number one, let me just, you all know this, that I don't, number one, I don't know everything. You all know that. So that I'll tell you in front, so you're not, you know, I'm, no, I'm sure you're not surprised because nobody knows everything. After the Anbiya, alayhi salam, they know the whole Risala. Every one of us is just a learner. Uh, so anyway, and uh, I'm not here to lecture you whatsoever. I'm here just to uh, sort of, what do I say? Let, let's say an intellectual discussion and a spiritual discussion about the characters of the best of the creation, sallallahu alayhi wa And to invest some of the time that we have with the book of Allah to see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's, uh, that's how it is anyway. أصدق الحديث كتاب الله الله says بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله I talked about that yesterday a bit in the خطبة where Allah سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran قل إن كنتم say قل say يا رسول الله tell them if you love Allah إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني then follow my footsteps يحببكم الله Allah will love you. Now look how this ayah, this is a portion of an ayah, but I'd like you to examine it with your heart, not just with your eyes and ears. The meaning is say, if you love Allah, if you love Allah, follow my footsteps. What's the result? Allah will love you. If you love Allah, follow my sunnah. What's the result? Allah will love you. This is the deen. Starts with love, ends with love. If you love Allah, follow my sunnah, Allah will love you. But what's the connection between the first love and the second love? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Say, if you love Allah, follow my sunnah, Allah will love, will love you. It starts with love and end with love. And the means to all that is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is really the whole, this is all we need to talk about. <laughs> this is, that's enough. Mahabba. This deen is not rituals. This deen is a deen of love. I always say this deen is not a deen of information. It's a deen of transformation. Why do you think as sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een were like that? They started with love and they ended up with love. It was not just one-way love. It's a two-way love. If you love Allah, the result is, follow me, Allah will love you. So it's both ways. That's the whole purpose of all your ibadah that we fight about so much. The mechanics and the micro-regulation of, of the ibadah that we fight about so much oftentimes. And you're right, no, I'm wrong. No, no, you're right. You know, and all that mental tennis that we play sometimes with each other because we learn one thing and we think now we know it all like the Arab poet says you might know one thing but there are many things that we don't know above every knowledgeable person there's someone who's more knowledgeable yet that's what the Quran tells us but anyway we don't want to go there. All the worship, not just the micro-regulation of worship, but all the worship that we do from salah and siyam and zakah and hajj and mu'amalat and, 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 and all that, what is the purpose? And oftentimes you always cite, you know, what was the reason for our creation? And everyone almost unanimously say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have created the jinn and the ins except so that they worship me. Very nice. But is then worship the objective of our creation? We created to worship. Or is worship itself a means to an objective? Is worship the objective or is worship a means to an objective? And when we look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam's authentic narration, Hadith Rawal Bukhari, others, you all know the Hadith. 
uh, hadith Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu where the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that ma uh, taqarra hadith Qudsi that all of you know hadith Qudsi means Allah said that to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where Nabi Mustafa alayhi wa sallam sallam and I need not to beg you and not to remind you as well that when you hear the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you make salam salam on him sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam right and this is the whole point after all that the hadith Rawah bin Majah bi isnad hasan the isnad is hasan to bin Majah who actually the isnad is sahih if you consider its corroborative narrations and evidence that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that anyone that would send his salam on me Allah gives me my ruh and I send my salam back to him so send your salam to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallallahu alayka ya sayyidi ya rasulullah al hadith that rawa abu huraira where the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says allah said ma taqarraba ilayya abdi bi shay'in ahabba ilayya mimma iftaradtuhu alayh my worshiper my slave my creation would not do anything to make him that makes him closer to me better than that which i obligated him to do he obligated you with salah you want to get close to him do your salah obligated made zakah fard you want to get close to him do the fard that he gave you whatever obligatory allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made then allah tells us which means that is doing this is the best way to get close to me because the whole point of the deen of the muslimin is iyaka nurid bima turid see some of the ulama of tazkiyah they call the student murid murid means want huh you want something to read from irada but see our deen is iyaka nurid oh allah you we want iyaka nurid but wait bima turid the way you want not the way i want you we want oh allah the way you want and therefore the murid in a sense then if we may take this is the one who he wants Allah with the how Allah wants him to be therefore he has no irada per se he has no more will because he is a manifestation of what Allah wants him to be hmm? and that's why there is a hadith that a Tirmidhi narrated in Nawadir also Imam Al-Ghazali I think believed that he mentioned it in the Lakin, it's not really a hadith. It has no sanad. Huh? Uh, no, some people say it's hadith, but it's not a hadith. Lakin, the meaning is correct. It has a corroborative evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. But it's not a hadith. Huh? It's attributed, supposedly alleged, that Allah told Dawood, alayhi salam, Abdi, O oh my slave, Abdi, Anta turid, wa ana urid. You want, O oh my slave, you want, and I want. وَلَنْ يَكُونُ إِلَّا مَا أُرِيد But nothing will happen except that which I want. You want to do something? You want, and I want. But at the end, nothing will happen except that which I want. فَإِنْ أَطَعْتَنِي فِي مَا تُرِيد Fima Urid, if you obey me in what I want, I will grant I will grant you what you want. If you obey me in what I want, in what I want, Ma Urid, I will grant you what you want. What do you want? You want happiness? You want security? What do you want? You want good end? You can do it your way, you do it his way. You do it his way, he will grant you what you want. He wants you to seek him, not seek his creation. 
If you seek his creation, you'll always be humiliated to the creation. And if you seek him, he will humiliate the creation in front of you. You choose. When he gives, he gives you in a way that you are in shock and awe. He does anyway. And to every day we declare public disobedience against him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. subhanahu wa ta'ala, every day he renews his ni'mah upon you. In ata'tani fi ma urid, if you obey me in what I want, ya murid Allah, because you are murid of Allah, <laughs> not murid of the creation. If you obey me in what I want, I will grant you what you want. This is not so difficult for Allah. Allah is kareem. He gives you everything. No problem. But then allegedly the hadith goes to say, وَإِن لَمْ تُطِعْنِي فِي مَا أُرِيدْ If you disobey me in what I want, أَتْعَبْتُكَ فِي مَا تُرِيدْ You will struggle and suffer to get what you want. You want to do it your way? You're going to go through ups and downs and lack of uh, comfort and lack of tranquility. You may own the world, but you don't have that clarity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are worth nothing then in that sense. Huh? You may own the whole dunya, but you don't have Allah. The whole dunya is worthless then. And someone who doesn't own anything from the dunya and has Allah with him, then everything is worth for him. So all relative, right? I remember our mashayikh in Syria, Allah have mercy on their souls, used to always teach us that the rich person or the wealthy person is not the one who has the most, but the one who needs the least. If you're needy, ya habibi, then you're not rich, you're dependent and relying and miskin. That's why Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ أَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهِ O people, your fakr, your need is only to Allah. Nothing else, everything He gives. If you obey me, فَإِنْ أَطَعْتَنِي فِي مَا أُرِيدْ If you obey me in what I want, أَعْطَيْتُكَ مَا تُرِيدْ I will grant you what you want. لا, you want to do it your way. وَإِنْ لَمْ تُطِعْنِي فِي مَا أُرِيدِ If you disobey me in what I want, أَتْعَبْتُكَ فِي مَا تُرِيدِ You will suffer, go through hardships, trying to get what you want. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Allah says, who avoids my dhikr, shall go through a difficult life, ma'isha, life, not in the akhirah yet, still in the dunya, dhanka, dhanak, tab wa shaqa, you will go through difficulty and hardships and pain if you avoid my dhikr. وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى Allah says, and will assemble in the day of judgment blind, the ayah says. قَالَ رَبِّي لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا Ya Allah, the human being has the audacity to ask Allah Jalla Jalla at that day. Why did you assemble me blind now? And I used to have my vision in the dunya. قَالَ كَذَلِكْ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا So shall it be. Our ayahs and sign came to you. You forgot about them. وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى And today you shall be forgotten. Simple. It's mathematics in a sense. One plus one equals two. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out like they say. Anyway. الْأَمْرَ مَا يَحْتَهَا مَا يَتْحَمَّلْ يَعْنِي إِنَّهُ أَحَدْ يَحُطْ فِي إن لم تطيعني فيما أريد أتعبتك فيما تريد. If you disobey me in what I want, if you obey me in what I want, I'll grant you what you want. If you disobey me in what I want, you will suffer trying to get what you want. 
ولن يكون إلا ما أريد and then at the end nothing will happen except what I want either way even if you think you want to do it your way but nothing will happen except what I want you want and I want and nothing will happen except what I want if you obey me in what I want I will grant you what you want and if you disobey me in what I want, you will suffer trying to get what you want. And at the end, nothing happens except that which I want. Allah Jalla Jalalu. Who Allah? How does the ayah start? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Who Allah? Who Allah? Who Allah? He, that's the whole point. Who Allah? A deen without love is no deen. A deen without love is no deen. Abu Huraira tells us that Allah, that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hadith al-Bukhari, that Allah said, مَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ فَتَرْتُ عَلَيْهِ My slave would not do anything that makes him closer to me better than doing what I asked of him to do. You want him the way he wants, not the way you want. إِيَّاكَ أُرِيد كَمَا تُرِيد I want you, Ya Allah, the way you want me to want you, not the way I want to want you. Hmm? Okay, so we understand. If you want to do, if you want to be close to Allah, nothing makes you closer than doing your fard, your fara'id. Nothing. There's no need to be inventive and creative about anything because it's already there. No, there's no need to reinvent. There's no reinventing the wheel anyway. Because it's already there. All you have to do is what he asked of you to do. Al-Fard. Then, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues that Allah said, وَمَا زَالَ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ And Allah is telling us in this authentic narration that my slave, my worshipper will keep doing, doing extra worship. Nawafil, extra worship. You see the point we started by saying that is worship an objective of life itself or is worship a means to an objective itself is worship an objective or is worship a means it seems that worship is a means to an objective worship itself is not an objective al ibadah itself is not an objective yes i have not created the jinn and ins except that they worship but the point of worship is not that you stop at the mechanics of worship the point of worship as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this authentic narration وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَى يَبِنْ نَوَافِلِ My slave will keep doing extra worship. Yes, Ya Allah, until what? Until what? حَتَّى أَنْتِلْ أُحِبَّهُ Until I love him. What's the objective of worship? To carry you to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If that worship doesn't carry you to the love of Allah, then there's interception. Because worship is not the objective of your creation, but the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu points it as Allah pointed it out in this hadith to be. Don't be fooled by the mechanics and stop there. Mechanics are important to be mastered and they need to be mastered. But وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِ يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى حَتَّى شوف حرف غاية هذا حَتَّى until uh, it gets you the غاية there is, a, there is an objective there is a goal of this worship حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ until I love him until Allah loves you فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ You know the hadith, so I don't want to tell you the hadith, you know, you know it all. That's why Al-Quran Kareem puts iman and, and love at the same level in a sense. How much love do you have truly? I'm not 
Everybody in words say, I love you. You know this. I mean, you know, ask anybody telling, I love you, I love you. Sure, I love you. No problem. Most abused word in the language, I love you. Everybody says, I love you for everything. Huh? They, sometimes they say, I love you, and they only mean to love themselves. That's all they love. They don't love anybody else. But I love you, and I love you. He meets one, somebody one time, he says, I love you. Very nice. Alhamdulillah. Al-Quran al-Kareem wants to tell us that when it, I love you when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say I love you to Allah, this is exactly reflective of your iman. How much do you truly love Allah? Not by words, huh? Not by words only. Uh, no, in this country we have a saying, well, there's a, an old Sufi statement. They used to say, that lisan al-hal afsahu min lisan al-maqal. Lisan al-hal afsah min lisan al-maqal. Which means the tongue of the state that you're living in is much more eloquent than the tongue of your mouth. Let your state speak, not your tongue speak. And that's why the Arab poet says, inna al-kalama lafi al-fu'ad وَإِنَّمَا جُعِلَ اللِّسَانُ عَلَى الْفُؤَادِ دَلِيلًا هو الكلام الكلام يعني the talk is really in the heart في الفؤاد but the tongue is the translator of the state of the heart that's all the tongue is trying to tell you what the heart is experiencing so when you say to someone I love you it's supposed to be what? a translation of what you're experiencing in the heart and therefore, where is Iman usually? Where is the Iman? In the heart. Notice? And that correlation is not there for no reason. And therefore, Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ And those who believe have the strongest love for Allah. Look, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا The strongest love. Therefore, and to look in your heart and to don't see just a word, I love Allah. No, no, actions speak louder than words. He is not just a claim and proclamation and, and slogan. It's not a slogan. That understanding then, how do you love Allah? On the day, how do you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Nasullah Fanasiyahum? They forgot Allah and Allah abandoned them. Another ayah which means they forgot Allah. And then the ayah goes to say which means Allah made them forget themselves. They forgot about Allah. Allah made them forget themselves. He goes into this dunya like a jungle. He even forgets himself. Who am I? What am I? What's my purpose? What am I doing? He sees things running, he runs with them. Wherever it is, huh? You ask him, what are you? He tells you what his degree is. He tells, you ask him, what are you? He tells you what he does for a living. Nasullah. They forgot Allah. فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ Allah made them forget themselves in the process. They forgot themselves. Set of numbers, the value then becomes reduced to dollars and cents. Huh? But this dunya is more than just dollars and senses. It's more than just materialism. But they forgot themselves in the process. How long do they forget themselves? One year? Two years? Some people, they forget themselves their whole life. They live their whole life in a spiritual coma. Until when? Allah says, فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٌ Today, when we sent the angel of death, We've unveiled the veil from your eyes. فبصرك اليوم Today you can see 
clearly. But before you couldn't see because you forgot yourself. I hear the point is not to get dug, bugged down and fight and belittle and slander each other and label each other over mechanics of worship that no one can substantiate into a definitive sense. Yes, we need to prioritize what's more authentic and what's more strong. That's absolute. That, that goes without question. But the mechanics of worship is not where we stop because that's not the objective. For not only the mechanics of worship is not the objective, worship itself is not the objective. Because worship itself has an objective. The mechanics of worship is to make your worship valid. But worship itself needs to be valid. It's only valid if it's accepted. And it's only accepted if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah loves you. That's the only way. There's no other way. There's no other way. Well, let's not pretend that we can offer people hope and compassion and mercy. Let's not pretend that unless we actually live it. You can't give something you don't have. If you don't have compassion, if you don't live compassion, not talk, our deen is compassion. Especially nowadays in the past, you know, after all these things that happened in the U.S. and all that, unfortunate things and all that stuff we, when we tell people you don't read Islam man I mean give him give him some pamphlets give him so we give him pamphlets and we give him books read Islam is a religion of compassion and mercy man you don't understand that people don't want to read they want to see compassion in action they want to see an embodiment of compassion in you as a Muhammadan follower the best books of scholars are not necessarily the written ones, but the walking ones. Many of our mashaykh, one of mashaykh in Aleppo, rahmatullahi alayhi, before he died, they asked him, Sheikh, how many books did you read, did you write? He says, I left walking books. But that's not something abstract from the Sunnah. You all know that. Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha bintu Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda. When she was asked in the authentic narration, Ahmed and others narrated it. When she, asked, when she was asked about Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, how was ya Ummul Mu'mineen? This is our mother, Ummukum, Ummuna, Ummul Mu'mineen radiallahu anha wa ardaha. She said, oh mother, how was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inside his house? She says, he was a walking Quran. He was an embodying Quran. He's a walking book of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. We can sit here and become philosophers about the mechanics until tomorrow. Or we can do the mechanics and master them and move to the objective of the mechanics. And then from the objective of the mechanics, which is worship, we move to the objective of worship itself. That love must be confirmed by actions. Can you imagine that you love somebody and you do everything they don't like? You don't really love them. Your wife will tell you that if you're married. Or your husband will tell you that if you're married. Huh? Your parents will tell you that. If you love me, you would follow my instructions. And if you, would lo you love me, you would not disobey me. There's a poet that used to say, Tas, uh, actually, it's attributed to a shafi. Huh? I say a poet sometimes, I don't name the attribution to the person simply because there is no there is a lack of substantiative evidence to authenticate a chain to a shafi'i so therefore i am hesitant sometimes to attribute it to a shafi'i or others yet it is attributed generally to imam shafi'i rahimahullah but there's no authentic sand in my pocket that i can substantiate so take it or leave it but he says ta'sil ilaha wa anta taz'um hubbahu he says, you disobey Allah while you claim that you love him 
This is really ajeeb. This is amazing. What kind of understanding you have? لو كان حبك صادقا لا أطعته إن المحب لمن يحب مطيع. If your love was truthful for Allah, you would have obeyed Him. For those who are in love are obedient to their beloved. إن المحب لمن يحب مطيع. There is ta'a for that you love. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of the whole thing. That's why you see in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the authentic narrations are abundant. A man comes to the Prophet ﷺ, Hadith Anas, Fal Bukhari. So you don't say, well, what do you mean abundant? I need Dalil. Quick. Okay, here you go. A man comes to him, says, Ya Rasulullah, what, uh, what should I do? Five salawat, five salawat. Uh, zakah, zakah, hajj, hajj, siyam, siyam. That's it. I'm not going to do anything more than that. Nothing more. Only the obligatory. N not even anything extra. Nothing. Huh? For Ramadan, I'm not going to fast one more day. Five salawat, I'm not going to even do one more salah. Sunnah, I'm not going to do anything. Only five. Uh, hajj, only, I'm not going to do anything else. He tells him, Aflaha sahibukum in Sadaq. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa tells him that he will be granted success if he actually fulfills what he just said. Simple. He, there's no all these things and all that. Just a, just a fard, ya Rasul, just a fard. And he goes. Huh? The narration tells, doesn't speak of him ever again. Now he went back into the desert with his sheep and uh, herd and all that. You never heard of him. This man now is a sahabi radiallahu anhu wa arda. And he dies and inshallah goes to Jannah. End of story. It was transformation. It was not a load of information. The little thing that he just got, that was sufficient for him to be successful. End of story. Don't even talk about him again. He's gone. He's already in Jannah. Bismillah. Huh? This is the haqiqah. And sometimes we are chasing... You know, things and they're right in front of us. Huh? Haven't you looked for your keys many times and they're right in your pocket? They're right in front of your eyes, but you're looking for them everywhere else. Well, Maulana, it's right in front of you, Habibi. Hadith Anas al Bukhari also, a man comes to him and says, Ya Rasulullah, when is the day of judgment? I want to know. You know some, because sometimes we ask questions just simply for asking. Worse than that, when you ask a question, you already have five different answers, but you want to check whether the answer is going to be similar to what you have or not. Why wasting your time and breath? You know, our breath is counted. From the minute you're born, your breath is counted. Why waste it? Why waste it? Go to something, improve yourself. Imp contribute positively to your world. Do something good with your life. Don't waste it on silly stuff. It's not worth it. Life is not long enough. None of us is here to stay. I know all of you are beautiful people. Mashallah, I see beautiful faces, great people. Despite all your beauty, I hate to break the bad news to you. None of us is here to stay. None of us. All that beauty will be now spiritual beauty. Will no longer be physical beauty. And spiritual beauty gets its infusions from what good stuff you've done while you were in your physical beauty. Black, white, and all in between, whatever you want to call it, all that stuff is all the creation of Allah. You're beautiful based on your deeds, not on your ethnicity and color and degrees and where you live and the street you're on and the car you drive. And the degree that, and the title you have before or after or in the middle between your name. Makes, you know, nowadays because we have to throw all these titles so we can feel better. Makes no difference, brother. Kullukum li Adam. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us in the hadith that Hakim narrated. And he authenticated it, says, all of you are children of Adam. Got a problem? Your father is Adam. What do you mean? Well, your father is Adam. Well, well, he's not the same color. Well, that's the same thing. His father is still Adam. Well, he doesn't, he, you know, we're not the same socioeconomic status. Still his father is Adam. Oh, 
What happens afterwards? You're all going to be gathered together the same way you came. يَوْمَ نَطْوِ السَّمَاءَ كَطَيِّ السِّجِلِّ لِلْكُتُبِ Allah says, كَمَا بَدَأْنَا أَوَّلَ خَلْقٍ نُعِيدُ Just like you came, you will exit. You came without anything and you're going to leave without anything. That's just the way it is. Tell me when my time is up, yeah, Mawlana. This man comes to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says, Mata sa'a ya Rasulullah? Hadith sahih fil Bukhari, hadith Anas. When is the day of judgment, ya Rasulullah? The point is asking for the day of judgment, what's the point? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants to teach us that the question must be benefit, benefiting, benefiting to you and benefiting to others. So he did not answer the question. He says then, what have you prepared for it? You're asking about the day of judgment, Qiyamah. What have you prepared for Qiyamah? It seems like the man was overtaken, shocked in a sense. He wasn't prepared. He was prepared to get an answer uh, five days and three years, you know, three years and five days and two minutes, stuff like that. Maybe, huh? We don't, I don't know. I'm just saying. It seems like that. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, What have you prepared for it? A sahabi radiallahu says, Ya Rasulullah, I have not prepared much for it except, and I have only done my fara'id. I only don't do my fard. I don't do much. Except I love Allah and His Messenger. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells him, then you will be with those you love. I have not prepared much, except that I love Allah. But he doesn't say I love like we say I love. Huh? In, in, you know, there's, he's in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he's telling them, I did, on, you know, what I have I prepared, I have not prepared much. My basic deeds. But I have a love for Allah. And I have a love for his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That heart emanates with love. And that heart that emanates with love it sheds on all the limbs, so all the limbs reflect love in their action and in their words and in their state, in their spiritual state. It's emanating love. It's emanating illumination. Nurun ala nur. Yahdi Allahu li nurihi may yasha. Allah guides to his nur whomever he wants. That love shows and speaks. You don't have to say it. I have not prepared much, Ya Rasulullah, except I love Allah. And his messenger. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells him, You are with those you love. It's not just a word, huh? Because sometimes we try to reduce things, taking out their meaning from them, their soul from them. It's not saying, I love Allah, or saying, I love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How is that? What's your dalil that you love Allah? What do you do? Similarly to the Prophet ﷺ. It seems, Anas says actually in this narration of Al-Bukhari, Anas says, فَوَاللَّهِ مَا فَرِحْنَا بِشَيْءٍ We, the, sah the rest of the Sahaba, we were not happy about something as, if, as we were happy about this statement from the Prophet ﷺ. Then Anas says, by Allah, I love Abu Bakr and Umar anhuma, And I hope and I pray that Allah assembles me with them because I love them, though I do not have their deeds. It seems Islam wants to tell us that al-mahabba sha'nuha ajib. Love has a amazing things. We can't really pinpoint it. That love, how does that love? I know love transforms. I know love, love does this to you. But it seems that love has so many things it does to you that you really don't know where the extent of it is. Love, you are with those you love. Check your heart to see who is in there. And be careful. Because you will be with those you love. Truly love. Not just a word love. Truly love. See your heart. Check your qalb. Huh? That's why al-qalb or the heart is called qalb. Because it flips. Huh? Qalb, 
يقلب flips it flips on you sometimes make sure it's on the right frequency because you might be assembled with those you love if you don't love the right people or the right entities anyway when Allah says those who believe have the highest love for Allah this ayah tells you that there is a direct correlation between your love and your iman. If you truly love Allah, that means it's a reflection of your iman. And if it's just a word, then your iman is just a word. Simple as that. So Allah wants us to love Him. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ الْحُبُّ لِلَّهِ وحديث البخاري See, now we have the ayah here says لله, the hub of Allah, the love of Allah, and Hadith al Bukhari says the love for the sake of Allah. Ajib. One is the love of Allah, and the other one is the love for Allah. And those are the kind of loves you have to have. A love of Allah and the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why those who have real belief true iman they have love of Allah and those who have awthaq or al-iman true iman they love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it's about love sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to love something your heart has ta'alluq. Ta'alluq means attachment. Your heart is attached. Allah wants your heart all to be for Him. Only. Ifrad. Tawheed al muhabba I call it. There is Tawheed of Mahabba. <laughs> you cannot do shirk and Mahabba. Tawheed of Mahabba. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes wants you to love other things that He loves. You see... It's not loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only as well. In the absolute sense, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But from that stems the love of things that Allah loves. Have you read the hadith of Imam al-Tirmidhi? Hadith, hadith Mu'adh bin Jabal. The hadith has an authentic sanad. Or at least, la yanzil al hasan. Yani it's not below the hasan as far as classification of the sanad. Hadith Mu'adh. In fact, the tirmidhi narrated it in another place through uh, Abu Darda. Huh? He narrated it through Abdullah bin Rabi'a al Dimashqi and Abu Idris al Khawlani. Abdullah bin Rabi'a al Dimashqi is not a very strong narrator, so that narration has slight weakness. Though Imam al Tirmidhi rahimahullah, declared it Hassan, who in fact actually the riwayah of Abu Darda was authenticated by Al Hakim in his Musadrak. But anyway, let's go to the other one that was all clear. So we don't want to now go into the uh, yeah, I need the narrations and, and, and all that. Hadith Mu'adh, Riwayat Mu'adh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Mu'adh says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in an authentic narration, says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua, and all of you know the dua, probably, uh, among the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma an yas'aluka fi'l al-khayrat wa tarka al-munkarat. You heard that before? Oh Allah, I ask you to enable me to do the good and to avoid doing bad things. Look at that. Oh Allah, I ask you to make me love the masakeen. Who is the miskeen? Who is miskeen? What's a miskeen? Who knows? Huh? Poor? How can you be poor? Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa amma as safinatu fa kanat li masakeen. As safina. The, the ship in the ocean used to belong to Masakin, Ya'malun al Bahr. They own a ship. If you are a miskin and you own a ship, that's a good miskin, financially speaking. <laughs> huh? Al Quran, remember in Surah Al Kahf? When Al Khidr and Musa alayhi salam, Allah says, Wa amma as safina tu fakanat li masakin. <laughs> safina, they, some group of Masakin, they own a safina. They own a ship. Well, that's pretty good for, for a poor. Here, the, poor, the poverty is to Allah. That you can be rich, like I mentioned at the beginning. You can be rich as rich as Uthman radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Uthman al-Ghani, right? What do we call Uthman al-Ghani, his title, something like that? Like Sayyidina Uthman was faqir ilallah. Huwa al-faqru ilallah. I always said, and again, 
The wealthy is not the one who has the most, but he's the one who needs the least. That's when you're wealthy. And when you need Allah, Ya ayyuha nas antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. You are, oh people, you are the true faqir to Allah. And a faqir to Allah, but everybody is faqir to Allah. Then what's the point? Why is the ayah telling us this? Al ayah wants you to move within your heart the sense that you are in need of Allah now and in every minute in your life. You are needy to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. To bring the sense of poverty to Allah and need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the whole point. Allahumma an yas'aluka du'a'u al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Sahih. Allahumma an yas'aluka fi'la al-khayrat wa tarka al-munkarat wa hubba al-masakeen. Look at that. Shuf, al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to love al-masakeen. But then notice the du'a is long. You know, I'm sure you know it. Then he goes... And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma ni asaluka hubbak. O oh Allah, I ask you to give me the love of your love. Give me your love. Asaluka hubbak. O oh Allah, I seek your love. But then look at the next one. Wahubba may you hibbuk. And the love, Ya Allah, I am seeking, I'm asking you to give me. The love of those who love you. Wait a minute. Oh Allah, I'm asking you to give me your love. Okay, understand that. And the love of those who love you. I want to love those who love you, Ya Allah. Allah. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidul Kainat, is asking Allah to give him the love of those who love Allah. al awliya al-Salihin. To love those who love Allah. You see now the ta'alluq, to love Allah, and to love those who love Allah. What, there's some things that love Allah? Yeah, it doesn't have to be people. <laughs> I don't think, no, only people love Allah and His Messenger. No, 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 no. And remember the hadith al Bukhari, hadith Anas, where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says about the mountain of Uhud, هَذَا جَبَلٌ يُحِبُّنَا وَنُحِبُّهُ and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talks about the mountain of Uhud. Mountain, mountain, rocks. He says, this is a mountain, هذا Jabal. This is a mountain, yuhibbuna. This mountain loves me and we love him. A mountain loves? Ajeeb, what do you mean mountain loves? Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says mountain loves, that means the mountain loves. How come some people, stones love? Stones love, but some people's hearts are worse than stones. ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلَكْ فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, your hearts became more staunch, more closed than stones. فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ It's like the hajar, it's like the stones. بَلْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ But worse than stones. Stones love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sure, hadith for Bukhari, please. Huh? But please, I always say, don't read Bukhari without love. Because then it becomes Bukhar. Hmm? And, uh, huh? uh, Bukhari without mahabba is Bukhar. Well, know, you read from here, it goes from here, no problem. You can read it all day long. And uh, we read the Quran all day long without love. Doesn't change us. Though the Quran changes. Yeah, the point is that you have that love. And then you can read. But without prerequisites, you can't go anywhere. You can't go anywhere. And you can be as you can have all the information you want. Information doesn't necessarily mean transformation. Iblis had information. But Iblis did not have transformation. Don't, I'm saying this, don't be chasing zebras. Huh? Don't be chasing the wrong things. The tawjih of your heart, direct your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَوَلِّي وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Oh Allah, I ask you to give me your love. Ya Rasulullah, uh, anta habibullah. You are the habib of Allah. But not only that, وَحُبَّ مَنْ يُحِبُّكَ And the love, Ya Allah, give me the, make me love those who love you. 
Not only that, and make me love any deed that makes me close to you. Make me love you, make me love those who love you, and make me love every deed that makes me close to love, loving you. This is a deen. This is a deen. What, what do you mean if I have my heart attached to someone, it benefits me? Yeah, yeah, it benefits you. Not only to someone. Stones. Stones. Uhud loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We love Uhud for the sake of Allah because he loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You love Uhud. That may actually do something for you. The hadith that Rawal Bukhari Muslim. You all know the hadith. Well, hadith where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hadith Sufyan bin Abi Zuhair radiyallahu anhu narrated the hadith. Narrated the hadith. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking about the city. He says, Tuftahu al-Yaman. Yemen will be liberated. And he talks about it. And then he says, Wal-Madinatu khayrun lahum law kanu ya'lamun. But Medina is better to them, for them, if they know. He's putting, he's now giving you a sign, attaching your heart. If you want to attach, you see, because sometimes Al-Quran and, and Sunnah gives you attachment. Where do you attach your heart to? Even to things, places, times. Medina. But Medina stones, Medina. Soil, Medina. Then he goes to say, وَتُفْتَحُ uh, sham sham will be liberated. And he talks about sham, and then he says, وَالْمَدِينَةُ خَيْرٌ لَهُمْ But Medina is better for them. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ If they were to know the truth. Then he says, وَتُفْتَحُ الْعِرَاقِ Iraq will be liberated. But then, he says, he talks about it and he says, but Medina is better for them if they know. Sham, Iraq, Yemen, all these things. But he is calibrating your heart to Medina. But Medina is stones and soil. Yeah, but loving Medina as a love of Iman, also as a sign of Iman. Not only that, Iman itself is attached to Medina. Not that if you like Medina, you are, that's a sign of Iman. No, no, no. Iman itself, the one that you want to have, the Iman as an entity itself, it is attached to Medina. The hadith in Bukhari, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the authentic narration, إِنَّ الْإِيمَانَ لَا يَأْرِزُ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ Iman itself goes and seeks refuge in Medina. كَمَا تَأْرِزُ الْحَيَّةُ إِلَى جُحْرِهَا Just like the snake seeks refuge in its cave. Iman itself goes to Medina. Iman itself is attached to Medina. Imagine, if Iman is attached to Medina, where you should be? Where should you be? Not only that, notice where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points your heart. To, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. He's now showing your heart now some, some spaces and some time. Creation. Attach your heart, the ta'alluq of your heart with that night of qadr. That night of qadr. Attach your heart to it. It's something great. Salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr. Notice. La, another hadith also from Bukhari. You all know the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. The hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says seven, there will be seven kinds of people in the day of judgment that will be granted shade, dhill. Yawma la dhilla illa dhillu. A day where no one is granted shade except those whom Allah grants shade. Remember the hadith? Seven kinds of people will be granted shade in the day of judgment when no one is granted shade except those whom Allah grants shade. May Allah grant us a shade. Who are they, Ya Rasulullah? Imamun Adil. Just Imam. Who is the next one? Washabun Nasha'a Fi Ta'atillah. Fi Ibadatillah. And a young person grew in the Ibadah of Allah from the beginning. Look at that. Who is the third one, Ya Rasulullah? And I want you to pay attention to this. وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسْجَدِ And a man, in that sense, a woman also, whose heart is muallaq, attached to a masjid. That person will be given shade in the Day of Judgment, yes. But the masjid is bricks. Doesn't matter. Bricks that Allah loves. 
your heart is attached to bricks Allah loves, Allah will give you a shade. Bricks. Bricks, no problem. Masjid, masjid, yeah. Look at the heart is mu'allaq where? Bil masjid. Let me give you other hadith. Also Bukhari and Muslim narrated the hadith Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. And I'll finish with this. I know I've taken, I've talked too much, I've talked too much. The hadith of the mass murderer, do you know it? All right. So there's uh, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, hadith of Sahihain, huh? narrated in the authentic, in, the, in both Sahih Muslim and Bukhari. Where the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us about some man in Bani Israel. He says this man, he killed 99 people. Huh? Mass, he was a killer for a living, hitman. That's what he does. Huh? فهذا he said قتل تسع وتسعين نفسا هو الله says in the Quran for our شرع من قتل نفسا whoever kills one soul as if he killed humanity أبدا there's no joke with this like in all thousands of years ago whenever that is this man from بني إسرائيل killed ninety nine souls he says please take me to some man of knowledge or some man of فدل على راهب also. So I'm going to bring you, I'm going to try to diversify the wording of the hadith and all the narrations are authentic. Huh? And I like it because it's more explanatory in, in some aspects. They showed him, they told him, you are a mass, mass murderer. Uh, sorry, we, there's only one worshiper. He worships Allah a lot. Go ask him. You know somebody who worships Allah a lot. Rahib, Abid, Zahid. Any impurity destroys the whole day for him. Uh, he's always in constant worship. So this mass murderer came to him. Salam alaikum. Salam. He says, look, I killed 99 people. Is there a tawbah for me? Can I repent? That, that Abid, that worshiper looked at him. After you killed 99 people, you want to come and repent? Go. There's no repentance for you. That this habit, if you if you steal a if you steal little thing, is you ruined your whole life. Huh? This is over. There's no. So that killer, he says, there's no tawbah for me. So he said he took it and he killed him. Might as well. Says, Since there's no tawbah, might as well just take you out. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Islam, Allah says, إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ only those who disbelieve in Allah are hopeless from the mercy of Allah. Shuf, look at that. Look at that now. Hada, this, after he killed now the hundred person, hundred, number one, number one hundred person, he says his self also, Shuf, sometimes, وَإِذَا الْعِنَايَةُ لَاحَظَتْكَ عَيُونُهَا نَمْ فَالْحَوَادِثُ كُلُّهُنَّ أَمَانُ Sometimes, Allah, when he guides people, even if you're in desert, Allah sends you guidance. You don't know where you are. But Allah opens the door for those whom Allah guides. You don't know how it came. You, if you had planned it, you would have never been able to plan it. The light comes from somewhere and hands, mysterious unseen hands, just take you step, baby steps until you reach the shore and the banks of salvation and safety. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ways are sometimes. Huh? Subhanallah al-Azim. He's a mass murderer. What does he do? Something is irking him now. So he says, I need somebody who can help me. I killed 99, then the, 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 tenth, the hundredth person, he says, there's no tabba, so I killed him. I need someone to help me. Is there a repentance for me? Fadulla ala alim. He was pointed out to a scholar. Alim. Alim comes from alam. Huh? Alam means what? The world. Huh? Yani he doesn't just know one thing. And therefore, the alim is supposed to be alam. The alim is supposed to be a world in a person. Ummatun fi nafs wa alamun fi shakhs. An ummah, entire ummah in a nafs of one human being. You see some people by themselves, they are an ummah. And that's why Allah, when he praised Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, inna Ibrahim kana ummah. Don't worry about the rest of the people. Ibrahim by himself was an ummah. That's it. Because he was an ummah in himself. وعالم في شخص. You can have some people. The universe is in them. In a sense, in a sense of knowledge and ilm and far vision and compassion and mahabba. Anyway. So they pointed him to a scholar. So he went to that scholar. 
says, look, this is the story. And I, uh, I, did, I killed 99 people. Then I went to Arab and this, and I killed 100 people. Is there a tawbah? Is there repentance for me? And that alim looked at him and he says, وَيْلَكْ وَمَنْ يَحُولُ دُونَكَ مَنْ يَحُولُ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ And woe to you. Who would stand? Who dares to stand between you and Allah? Go. He says, what do I do? He says, Utruk, leave al qarya al khabitha allati anta fiha. Leave this evil village where you live in. وَذْهَبْ إِلَى الْقَرْيَةِ الصَّالِحَةِ كَذَا وَكَذَا Go to that good village, so and so. فَإِنَّ فِيهَا In this village there are good people, pious people. Stay with them. That's it. So the man left. Look at that. Now what did this alim put in his man, this man's heart? The love of that good village. Leave this vile, this, this, this evil village you're in. Go to the good village. Now what's in his heart? That good village. Look. Good village. So now he went. He went to his village. He left. As soon as he got almost halfway, أدركه الموت. Death befell on him. Death got him. Uh, you know when death comes, there's no rain check. Huh? Give me a rain check. No rain check. Time. Time's up. He died. فاختصمت فيه. The Hadith goes to say that the Malaika of Rahma and the Malaika of Adab, the Malaika in charge of Jannah and the Malaika in charge of Jahannam, they fought. Where should we take him? You know, this man he left repenting, but you know he never did anything. He's a, you know. So they said, okay, let's measure the distance between where he died and his the bad village, and the distance where he died to the good village. And wherever he's, if he's closer to the bad village, he goes to Jahannam. If he's closer to the good village, he goes to Jannah. Look at that. Now he died with his heart attached to the good village. But good, what's a village? Stones? Stones benefit you? You can benefit by loving stones? No, stones. Being close to a stones benefit you? Stones, huh? So they started, the malaika started now measuring the distance between him and the bad village and between him and the good village. Al hadith, the authentic narration says, he was one hand span closer to the good village. Just one hand span, like this. They measured he was just one hand span closer to the good village, so he went to Jannah. Wait a minute. Being one hand span close to liking stones gets you to Jannah? Oh, wow, isn't that shirk? That's shirk if you worship it. Not if you love it for Allah. One hand span closer to the, to the pious village. But the pious village is what? There's just some good people. I'm not talking about anbiya there. <laughs> There's no nabi there necessarily. I'm not talking about necessarily awliya and great. There's just good people there. It's better than the other one. Attachment to that village and being one hand span closer to that village was a cause for salvation and success. Absolutely was. وقلب ورجل قلبه حديث البخاري بفور ورجل قلبه معلق بالمسجد. The heart is attached to the masjid now. One is attached to Medina. One is attached to the masjid. One is attached just to a pious village. And you don't like stones. You know who likes stones. When you go to the Kaaba, do you kiss the stone because the stone, or you kiss the stone because someone you love kissed the stone? Please, please, please. 
Nobody kisses a stone for a stone. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu looked at the black stone and he says, you know, I know you're a stone, you're helpless, but I'm kissing you because my messenger kissed you. And, uh, I kiss you because who, of someone who kissed you. Like the Arab poet used to say, he says, Ataytu diyara, diyara layla, uqabbilu dhal jidara wa dhal jidara. He says, I went to a layla. Layla is just a symbol of any woman. Huh? Maybe women, maybe not women. According to some, you know, some people, they call anything layla. Well, everybody has his own layla. Everybody has a different layla. Huh? Somebody's layla is something else. Somebody's layla has money. Huh? Somebody's layla has power. Everybody sings his own layla. Everybody has his own whatever layla wants. Huh? Well, some people's Layla is different. So anyway, I don't want to go about Layla. Layla is another story. There's that Majnoon Layla, you know him? The crazy about Layla. Well, everybody, like I said, has his own Layla. Now, Everybody claims that they love Layla, but Layla doesn't recognize any of them. No? Yeah, that's the point. It's one-way love. You have to have two-way loves. Uh, two-way love, huh? قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ yeah, It's not that you just claim. It has to be real. And the connection between the first love and the second love is Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وعلى عليه. فَاتَّبِعُونِ uh, The poet says, أَتَيْتُ الدِّيَارَ دِيَارَ لَيْلَى I went, he says, to where Layla used to live. She doesn't live anymore there anymore. It's ruins now. I am kissing the stones, this wall and that wall. But he says, وَمَا حُبُّ الْجِدَارِ شَغَفْنَ قَلْبِي It's not the love of the stones that overtaken my heart. وَلَكَنْ حُبُّ مَنْ سَكَنَ الْدِيَارَ But the love of those who lived between those walls. It's not that I'm kissing the wall because I like kissing stones. It is I'm kissing the wall because of the love of who used to live between those walls. Therefore, Umar anhu kissed the black stone. The black stone is not honorable per se, in a sense, only because of anything, but because Rasulullah kissed it, it became honorable. Because the Mustafa is much more honorable than the black stone or the white stone or whatever stone you want to have. And is more honorable than the whole world and the dunya. He's the one who honored the Kaaba. He's the one who honored Baytullah. Haditha ibn Umar al-Sahih, you know Haditha ibn Umar al-Sahih. Yani the Sanad al-Sahih. When Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he looks at the Kaaba, the Kaaba, huh? The Kaaba. And he says, Ma'a'zamaki wa ma'akramaki. You're great and you're sacred. But the sacredness of the believer is greater than you. A believer, not the master of the believers, just a believer is more sacred than the Kaaba. That we sometimes don't pay attention to. Hmm? This blink of an eye and this shorting, you know, when you deal with people, with, you know, sometimes you only get to know people when you deal with them with money. That's why I say, if someone wants to borrow money from you, make sure you make them kiss your hand 20 times. They said, why? I said, because you have to kiss their feet 50 times to get your money back. <laughs> so at least you get something in <laughs> at the beginning. I'm joking, huh? I, I saw all of you so serious, I figured, you know. Uh, you know, you give him now, you have to call him all the time. And now he doesn't want to call you. Before, he is, oh, he's your best friend. This imbalance, you'll pay for it. جمع الحلال على الحرام ليكثره دخل الحرام في الحلال فبعثره You think that you add haram and halal you make it grow? It will destroy the haram that you added will destroy the halal that you had. Destruct, destruction, that's what happens. That you think addition it seems to be subtract, sub, subtraction, not addition. Implosion, not addition. Everyone has his own calculation. But again, you want and I want. And nothing will happen except what I want. If you obey me in what I want, I will give you what you want. 
And if you don't obey me in what I want, you will suffer trying to get what you want. But nothing will happen at the end except that which I want. Allah, Allah. فَهَذَا he went, he was just one arm, one, not arm span, one hand span closer to this village. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him and granted him paradise. I am not telling you this village is a village that has this and so and so Nabi. We don't have that narration, probably did not have that. Imagine if you have in your heart not the love of stones where good people live in, but if you have in your heart the love of Rasulullah, Sayyidul Anbiya wal Mursaleen. If the love of a good, stones of people where, where good people live in was a means of salvation, what about the love of Sayyidul Anbiya, Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallam, in your heart? Everything, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, everything that is attached to Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam, is automatically elevated. Mecca, the city of his birth, became Mecca tul Mukarrama, the honorable Mecca. Medina, the city of his migration, became Medina al Medina tul Munawwara. The best city became, the honorable city became the city of his birth. The illuminated city be became the city of his migration. Uh, the best book became the Quran, Muhaymin and Ali, superior and uh, and 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 uh, uh, and and high. The best Ummah, Kuntum, his Ummah, Kuntum, Khaira Ummah. You are the best Ummah. The best Ashab are his Ashab because they're his Ashab. Before him, they were no nobody knew them. They were nothing. Nobody knew about them anything. But because now they became his Ashab, they became what the best of Ashab. His family became, because of him, the best of families. Everything about him becomes honorable. Your heart becomes honorable if you are attached to him. You will be raised. The na'al, the na'al. The shoe, the sandal of Rasulullah sallallahu Remember the na'al? The na'alian? The sandal? Who talks about sandals? Na'al from leather. But because that Na'al touched the honorable feet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa today that Na'al of Rasulullah is mentioned in the most honorable and sacred books of Sirah and, and Ulum of, of as Sunnah. That Na'al became in the books, to study that Na'al became, gets you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To talk about that Na'al became part of the Sirah. To, to talk about the mule, Duldul, the name. That, that the Prophet ﷺ wrote, wrote and used to have, that becomes means of you to be close to Allah and to be close to His Messenger ﷺ. A na'al, a piece of shoe, became so honorable because Rasulullah ﷺ touched it. Because it was attached to Rasulullah ﷺ. Imagine if your heart is attached to Rasulullah ﷺ. And therefore, Al-Nabhani, rahimahullah, Al-Qadi, in the past century in, in Beirut, Yusuf, Sheikh Yusuf, rahmatullahi alayhi, he used to have a line of poetry. He used to say, "Ala ra'si hadha al-kawni na'lu Muhammadin." On top of this universe is the na'l, is the shoe of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Ala fajami'u al-kawni tahta zilalihi. That na'l was elevated. That that shoe was elevated. So the whole heavens and earth were under its shade. موسى لدى الطور قيل له خلع. When موسى عليه السلام went to the mountain in the dunya here in in Palestine, went to the mountain of الطور, Allah told them what اخلع. Take off your shoe. Huh? When موسى عليه السلام went, he says اخلعنا عليك إنك بالواد المقدس طوى. Take off your shoe. Take off your نعل. اخلعنا عليك. موسى لدى الطور قيل له خلع. When موسى went to the mountain in Palestine, he was told, take off your shoes. This is a holy valley. This is a holy mountain. وأحمد لدى العرش لم يؤمر بخلعين عاله. But the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم at the arsh, when he went, he was not ordered to take off his shoes. You choose. 
if a Nile, if a piece of shoe was elevated because it was, it was, it was attached to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, attach your heart to the Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Today, and I mentioned that earlier, they, we became creative in distractions. Distractions, everything. Huh? Uh, the youth are distracted in everything. Love this figure. Love that figure. There's a sports figure here. There's a music figure here. Even religious figures, even whatever figures, this organization and that organization and this place and that place and this, this, this. And we erect all kinds of things for them to be, to fall in love with. And we forget that they need to fall in love one who is azim. And the only azim is the one who Allah calls azim, not you call azim. The only great one is the one whom Allah deems as great, not the one that we deem as great. And the only one, as far as we know, that Allah deemed as great is noon wal qalam wa ma yasturun ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. Ya Muhammad, ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. Wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon. Wa inna ka la ala khuluqin azim. The one whom Allah called Azim, not you call Azim. Allah called Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Azim. His khuluq is Azim. Make sure you attach to them one, the one who is Azim. Make sure you introduce Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to your family, to your children. Make sure the masajid are places where Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is mentioned freely and nicely, including his day of Maulid. I'm going to say it in Arabic, huh? Because it's in Sahih Muslim. Otherwise, please change Sahih Muslim so we know. And I'm not saying that one ought to restrict expressing happiness. I don't like to use the word celebration. I like to use the word expressing happiness. The true lover of the Prophet ﷺ is not the one who expresses his happiness for the birth of the Prophet ﷺ once a year. But the sunnah was to express it once a week. Every Monday. Not once a year. In fact, a true lover of the Prophet ﷺ would be happy that the Prophet ﷺ was born every day of his life. Every day you are happy that the Prophet ﷺ, Allah sent him to you as a gift. After all, hadith al-Hakim narrated on Abu Salih al-Samman through Abu Salih al-Samman through Abu Huraira. Well, hadith sahih, marfu' though there's a narration to only Abu Salih Saman and Abi Huraira anyway here. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إنما أنا رحمة مهدا. I am a gift of compassion to all of you. A gift. يا أخي قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرحوا. They should express happiness for the rahmah of Allah. And there's no greater rahmah than the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as far as Allah created. But let's not go into the mental tennis. Let's be about actions, not words. Let's not try to get into secondary theological arguments and mental tennis and start wasting our times and breath. Let's do the work. Express your happiness for the Prophet ﷺ in the best way, which is the sunnah way, which is to express it every single week by allocating a specific worship, thanking Allah for his birth, which is a fasting or express it in any other permissible way without institutionalizing that format as an act of mandated worship. But let's express it. That's the key. Attach your heart to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to his love. Ahibbuni, the narration of al-Hakim. Love me for the sake of Allah, he tells you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا يؤمن وحدكم. One of you would not be a believer until he loves me. What are all these narrations then? Check in your heart for the love of the Prophet ﷺ. I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to bless you and your community and everyone in your community and everyone in your city and everyone in your state to bless them and to protect them and to provide them prosperity and to provide us all guidance. صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله الحمد لله رب العالمين